relationship and marriage he'll ever bless. And the fruit of the blessing is children. No, children are heir to the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Psalm 127 3. So when Adam knew his wife Eve, he, it meant he intimately, let's just say it sexually, knew his wife, not his seven year live in girlfriend. And the state law was sitting down and you're married. No, he knew his wife. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He didn't know the one he was shacking with. He knew his wife. So he knew his wife. She brought forth Cain. So the word know or knew is first mentioned in an intimate sin. So when Daniel said in Daniel 11 and 32, the people that know their God will be strong to do exploits. Uh, amen. This is not perverted in what I'm about to say, but it really reveals to us uh, the people that are intimate with God, that have a relationship, a close relation union with God. Come on. And I'm not talking about sex stuff right there. Come on, somebody. That's, that's perversion. You that's got an ear to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying, you're hearing loud and clear what he's telling us. Come on. Uh, he, he's really about the word intimacy. Someone say, in to me, sing. Glory to God. So the people that are intimate with their God, the people that have a relationship with their God, amen, they do, they're doing strong things. That means miracles of birth through their life. Amen, the power of God, amen, will be the blessing that's birth through, amen, that relationship they have with the living God. Come on, somebody shout, it's about a relationship. John 15, 13 said, greater love hath no man than this, that a man church member for a friend. John 15, 13, a friend. And in Hebrew, that word simply means someone to talk to. Jesus shed his blood on the cross, not for a bunch of church going church members with religion. He died for somebody to know him. He was dying for me to know him. He was crucified for me to know him. He wanted a relationship with me. Because what the first Adam in the garden lost through sin, hallelujah, through the serpent, but God and Eve, and then he will come on, church, through Eve. Praise God. What did they lose? I'll tell you what they lost. Genesis 3 and 8 said the Lord God came walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And when they heard his voice, hallelujah, said in verses 9, Adam, where art thou? Verses 10, Adam cries out and said, we heard you come. said, who told you you were naked? Uh -huh. What happened when sin entered, they became so self-conscious, they lost their God consciousness. That's what sin is. It's selfishness. It's focused on me. Focused on my. Come on, somebody. Me, me. Hallelujah. They began to see themselves rather than God anymore. They were afraid of God now. They didn't, they didn't want to be where God was at because they didn't know him. Now, hallelujah. You can say what you want to. You can excuse yourself from coming to church. and You don't want your mama's God. And you don't want your daddy's God. And you ain't got time for God. But what really deep down inside of you, there's a fear there. Praise the Lord God. You want to stay as far away from it as you can. So you don't have to think about eternity and think about having to stand before him one day and give an account of everything you did in your flesh. But on the other hand, when you know him, my God, there's a little fear there, but it's a reverent fear. It's a loving awe. You can't get enough of him. You want to be where he's at. You want to be among his people. Come on. Anybody hear what God's declaring? Adam, where are you? I hear God in pursuit of the first man, which is nothing but a portrait of the cross that was to come. I miss you there. Look at your neighbor. Say, we're all a part. We're all a part of that on stand. Not that one. Some of y'all about the hand drop. Praise God. Adam. The first man. We're all part of his family. God was saying to Adam, where are you? That's what Jesus was doing on the cross. It was a revelation of the cross to come. He was saying, you have left me. I didn't leave you. You sinned against me. Where are you? God knew where he was at. He just wanted Adam to see where Adam was. That's what the cross is about. 
Paul says, and it's preaching is a lot of times an offense. Yeah. So in the parish is foolishness, but it is to say it's the power of God. First Corinthians 1 18. Why is it such an offense? Yeah. Because it shows me where I am. It shows me without him, I'm going to go to a hell. Right. Where the fires never quenched and the worm never dies. Yeah. Without him. We don't like to see our sin. Modern preaching showed us that. Most of your most famous preachers on TVs revealed that. Come on, somebody. They're telling us we don't need to preach on sin no more. How in the world you preach the cross and not preach on sin? How in the world can you proclaim, amen, the bloody sacrifice of the Messiah who knew no sin, who took our sins from the body and not even mention sin? It was sin that nailed him there. It wasn't the Roman soldiers. It was my sin. Your sin. Come on, somebody. The cross of modern preaching has been too edited. It was bloody because we were nasty, filthy sin. Jesus didn't just shed his blood to forgive our sins. He shed his blood so our sins could be forgiven, yes. And so we could step into a personal relationship with him and know him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That's what the Holy Ghost showed me early on over 23 years ago. So Barbara and I died for a friend. John 15, 13. Greater love hath a man than this. Men in his life for his friend for for someone he can talk with, have relation with. In John 21 and 12, when Jesus said, come and dine, as the resurrected Lord declared, come and dine, he didn't say come and eat, he said come and dine. He, the table was not just a place of eating, it was a place of fellowship. In used to, in America, the table was not just an eating table, it was, a, it was a fellowshipping place, where at the end of the day, families would come together and they would have fellowship. Nowadays, if families gather together, they got to wait on somebody to finish the biscuits or, or finish cooking something. They all fussing. Because the gathering's revolving just around food. Man, let them take a while fixing the food because the whole reason we're here is not about food. It's about relationship. Fellowship we ain't seen in a while. We, come on. But now, by the time we get through eating, see you later. Food ain't fixed for a certain amount of time. They're complaining and they don't go. A lot of people come to church that way. They come to eat. They don't come to die. Feed me, preacher. Come on, feed me. Let me get up in my high chair. Come on, make sure it's smooth and milky. Come on, sugar coat it up. No, I thought about renaming my ministry Sugar Free Ministries. Praise God. Amen. No sugar coating here. Amen. Dress it up for me. Amen. Hurry up, speed feed it. Hurry up and microwave it. Ding, ding, ding. Three minutes out the door. Fast food. Fast food. Oh, glory. But Jesus didn't say come and eat. He said come and die. Come and die. God had to teach me that years ago when I was learning to die my wife. I would whine and die her all right. I'd whine about having to die her. When you die in your wife, you don't go down to Burger King where you can do it your way. <laughs> no, hey, no, you're required to go somewhere that'll cost you something. No, you have to pull she money out. She didn't know you had it. Come on, somebody. And the wine and die her, the light in a lot of times in those places is low. I remember the first time I took my wife somewhere to die and her after we'd been married. We'd been married over 18 years. But when I, I had to learn her, I, I thought dying her, man, I'd take her down to that nice restaurant she wanted to go to. But I complained the whole time I was there. My God, they have a trooper paint or light bill or something other. I can't, uh, they got candles everywhere. You can't even see in here, man. You got to eat by faith. I'm like, see what I mean? I complain out loud like I said, my God, I'm about to bring up a, a spotlight next time I come. I was whining her, but I was whining her too. I was whining, 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 whining. And then when I got the bless God bill, I wanted to slap somebody. Yeah. I thought, my God, I paid that much for that. 
get the fly food that lit on it before it got to me. Come on, somebody. Man, I had to stop by Burger King and we laugh and pull out more money and buy something to fill me up before I got to that. Well, I didn't complain, but God told me, He said, Son, hey man, to die in a hurry, it's not about the food. It's not about the cost. Come on now. It's not about the lighting. It's about her to sit at the table with you. Son, the table's not just the place to eat. Somebody shout the table. It was Lazarus who he had just raised from the dead. Martha was in the kitchen cooking and Mary was still down there to speak. She was about to break a amen, box of alabaster ointment. Amen. A very costly. It cost her a whole year's wages. Amen. And break it over her, over his body, preparing him for burial. Glory to God. But Lazarus is sitting at the table. Somebody shout, Lazarus is the miraculous. He represents in this story the miracle. Somebody shout, that's where miracles are. They're at the table. They're at the table of the Lord. When I don't come to the table just to say, God, fix this for me. God, I need you to do this for me. Anybody can do that. Pharisees who didn't even have a relationship with Jesus, who were only religious, amen, can do that. In Mark 8, 11, they said, show us a sign. And a wondering Jesus sighed and breathed in his spirit and said, you wicked generation, I'll give you no sign except for that Jonah. Three days and three nights in the bed of the well prophesied about his resurrection. From the dead. Glory to God. Amen. People wanting to see a sign. They didn't want a master. They wanted a magician. They wanted somebody just to give them a miracle. Give them a sign. Give them a wonder. Glory to God. They were religious and had no relationship. But those with relationship, they don't come just to the table for a miracle. They come for him. Lord, I'll give my life to you if you do this for me. You won't last long. If you don't come to him for him, period, you don't last. If you come to him for any other reason than him, I'm not saying you didn't come, but you won't stay long. you got to come for him. That's why I said you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You can't sit at the table of the Lord and the table of devils. Do you provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are you stronger than he? Oh, glory to God. He said you can't have the best of both worlds. To dine with me means to be intimate with me. God said I've prepared a table for you. Presence of enemies, I know you have with oil in your cup over run Psalms 23 5. Somebody said, said there's a table prepared before me. That's why God can anoint those that know how to dwell at his table. They come and dine with him. They come to him for him. That's why in the presence of enemies, they get anointings. Amen. When an enemy is attacked. That's, that's why they can have power to touch their life even when an enemy rises up against them. Because it's out of their intimate relationship that the power of God flows to where they are. People just come to the altar always asking him to do something with his hand. Do it, Lord. Fix it. God, 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 God. They just come to Him for something, but not someone. They don't come to Him for Him. They're so busy trying to touch the hem of His garment, they miss the Him that's wearing the Him. Come on, somebody. They miss the H-I-M that's got the H-E-M. Anybody hear what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. You know, they miss Him, and that is, that is sin, because God said in John, uh, no Romans, thank you, when it was 3.23, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The glory of God is not the power of God. The glory of God is His presence. It's His person. Praise the Lord God. I mean, it's possible to be in His power, or, amen, and where His power is moving, and still not be changed. But if you ever meet his glory, if you ever meet his person, if you ever come to him for him and sit down at the table, not